We've been brewing here for a while, and there's one thing that I keep noticing. Every time we try to brew kombucha with something other than sweet tea, we run into trouble. Apple juice, beer wort, grape juice, they all had the same result. Uh, it tasted bad, and specifically, the flavor of the fruit juice remained almost unchanged. The sweetness became tartness, and then that was it. It wasn't like grape juice becoming wine. Almost all of the flavor was unchanged by the scoby. And fruit juice aside, if you try to ferment something like beer wort or coffee, more of the flavor gets changed. It's just not in a way that's very expected or welcome. And then after bottling, there's a lot of yeasty off flavors that build up, kind of overwhelm everything else. So fruit juice, beer, keeps happening and it's not tasting good. And it's a problem I've been trying to crack for a while because I want to be able to get those flavors into a kombucha and the process should work. And first, let's take a look at the fruit juice. If I use my kombucha scoby and I try to ferment grape juice, why doesn't it taste like wine? It's the same initial fruit juice. The yeast are still using all of those fruit sugars. They're still doing all of the same yeasty things. So why is it different? And here is my hypothesis. The bacteria and yeast that make up our scoby are bred in a very specific environment. Tea and white sugar are their only food source, and they use those both very well. The tannins, the caffeine, the coloring, the hundreds of flavor and aroma compounds, the white sugar, virtually all of it is used by the scoby and converted into something new. So the end product is almost unrecognizable from what we started with because we've utilized everything. And when we use fruit juice instead of tea, I think we run into two problems. Problem number one, with the SCOBY specialized in fermenting black tea and sugar alone, it's not able to fully utilize all these new compounds it's never seen before in the fruit juice. And then in addition to that, all of the compounds it's used to using from the tea are no longer there. So that's problem number one. And how do we solve that? One of the most popular kombucha recipes out there is from a restaurant called Noma. It uses only apple juice as its base. No tea, no added sugar, no added thyme. But everyone I know that's tried it has run into trouble and has only produced mold. When we tried it on our apple cider episode recently, it just tasted like sour, thin, boring apple juice. So what could be the difference? Well, there are three Michelin stars is probably a factor, but it could also be that in the same way my scoby has only lived off of black tea and white sugar, Theirs could be living only on apple juice. This could have allowed their culture to adjust over time. The organisms that could use apple juice have thrived and grown in number, and the ones that couldn't have died back. Homebrewers also do something similar when they want to produce June, the honey and green tea counterpart to kombucha. Instead of trying to switch over all at once, gradually more honey and green tea are introduced until the colony can shift over. And in that same vein, we could introduce more apple juice with every batch to slowly swing the colony in that direction. But then we've got problem number two. And the second problem is that the yeast are the ones producing a lot of the flavor and aroma compounds in our kombucha, or in almost any fermented drink. The yeast you would use for something like beer or wine generally have a very neutral flavor, or at least a very specific flavor that you're after. If you fermented the same fruit juice with two different yeasts, you could end up with two very different wines. So they're a very important part of the final flavor that you end up with. And in kombucha, we have 10 or more wilder strains of yeast, and they are not shy about producing a lot of strong, funky flavors kind of what we want them to do in a kombucha. But not all of those flavors or aromas would be welcome in a wine. The solution to that is harder to work around because we kind of want all this wild yeast variety to help our symbiotic culture. And like I said, we want that specific flavor. And kind of similar to that, we wouldn't add wine yeast to sweet tea and expect it to come out tasting like kombucha. So I don't think it's fair for us to expect the reverse to be true either. So in summary, I think it's a mistake to try and ferment two halves of a drink together in one like we have been doing. Just because they're both going through fermentation doesn't mean that they're going to taste great when we Frankenstein them together. We need to think about what our real goal here is. And it's not just for the thrill of fermenting grape juice with SCOBY, at least not in this episode. Our goal is to have a flavorful tart kombucha with all the flavor of a beer or wine or cider. And instead of trying to make compromises for both, I think it would be better to try and do both of them separately as best we can to have the peak of both products and then to flavor one with the other. And so all of that's just to say that today I'm going to pour a bunch of beer and wine and cider into a kombucha and see what happens. Uh, and this could be a little bit of a mess because if you'll remember from our soda episode when we just poured a bottle into our kombucha, it ended up tasting very sour and thin. And that sourness was due to the fact that it was very acidic. Even though it was just as acidic as our kombucha, we're still adding more acid, even if we're adding more sugar along with it. And that just means we'll have to add probably a little bit more sugar than we expect. And then that thin taste of it was because we were trying to flavor an entire bottle of kombucha with just a small portion of soda. The solution to that ended up being a concentrated syrup, which is a little less practical here. So maybe this is all a mistake, but before I spend a month brewing my own wine, I've bought 
uh, some of the cheapest wine I can find. Plus a couple beers and a hard cider. So let's get brewing. So we're going to start things off with a Cabernet. We're going to test this out in our graduated cylinder first. Uh, and we're going to begin with 50 grams of the wine. And I'm going to add to it about 400 grams of our kombucha. Do we want this dry? Do we want this sweet? Do we want it to match the Cabernet? It's hard to say. Oh. I also just had breakfast. The flavor comes through and the kombucha is a little sweeter, but I think it can come through a little cleaner. I'm going to add 10 more grams. And then just so it doesn't get any more sour than this, I'm going to add 3 grams of simple syrup. Pretty good. Tastes like the wine. It's a little too sweet. I think this is ready to go. And that's bottle number one. For bottle number two, we're going with a Chardonnay. And I'm just going to start with 60 grams of wine here. Yeah, another three grams of simple syrup. And I'll add that the kombucha is saving this wine here because uh, this bottle tastes terrible. And that's bottle number two. For bottle number three, I've got Diamond Grape American Table Wine, which is the cheapest wine I found in the back of my cabinet from a trip to Gatlinburg. It's actually got a cork. I'll be right back. Can't say that I remember purchasing this. Uh, but I do remember drinking wine in Gatlinburg. Oh, <laughs> it's sweet. I'm going to do 50 grams. Nope. I'm not good at pouring. I'm going to do 57 grams. I feel like I might need to add lemon juice just to swing things back towards sour. I take that back. This is just kind of well balanced here. Uh, so I'm going to add that three grams of simple syrup. So it's the same proportions as the other two. At least we can compare them all uh, fairly now. And that's bottle number three. Next up, we're going to start with our cider. This is a crisp apple. We're going to start with 50 grams again. Gonna add another 10 grams. Yeah, all right. Same recipe as the others. I have to say that all of these so far are vastly improved by being uh, combined with kombucha. Uh, but that's bottle number four. Next up, we've got an oatmeal stout. And we're gonna jump straight to 60 grams here. Distinctly oatmeal sout. The kombucha does have all the flavor, but uh, it's distinctly too sour. Some of that's unavoidable, but uh, I'd like to try and balance it out a little bit. So I'm going to add our three grams of sugar. Bottle number five. And then finally, I've got a Founder's Dirty Bastard, which... I don't actually know if I can say on YouTube or not. It's just you and me watching, so hopefully we're not too offended. Uh, I'm going to just jump straight to 60 grams here, and then 3 grams of our sugar, because why fight fate? That's pretty good. These bottles I'm going to let carbonate at 78 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit for three days. And then we'll see how they taste. We are back and we are here a day later than expected because I had forgotten the lessons that I taught myself. On our ABV episode, we found that when a kombucha had 1-2% to alcohol in it, 
Uh, it seemed to not carbonate quite as quickly. So uh, I went four full days here at 78 to 80 degrees. And we're starting with our Cabernet. And that got quite fine carbonation. So I think that was the right choice. It smells a little yeasty, but it does smell like red wine. A thousand percent better than the wine we made. It's a little sweet, it's a little sour, it's distinctly red wine, it's very well carbonated. I think this hits all the flavor notes I would want. Yeah, I think that's just it. I think that's exactly what I would want it to taste like. It's got a very full-bodied red wine taste. It's not grape juice at all. It's not too yeasty. When we made kombucha out of uh, grape juice, it just tasted like sour grape juice. Just tastes like kombucha wine. Let's see if the white holds up as well. And this one's going to require some strain because it's got a uh, pretty big yeasty boy floating around in there. This is our Chardonnay. Oh, a little cloudy and a little bit too much of that yeast funk again. I don't care for that. It's not just that it tastes like wine kombucha, it tastes distinctly like Chardonnay kombucha. And that's kind of the whole point here, because we don't really want to just have wine kombucha or grape juice kombucha. We want to hit these specific wine flavor profiles, and I feel like this is the only way to do it. Just wish there was a way to get a little less yeasty funk. Perhaps that extra day was just a little bit too much time. Uh, we do have a few ways we could probably deal with that yeast, but uh, at least I think we're on the right track here. I mean, I don't want Chardonnay kombucha, but uh, if I did, this would at least be it. Let's keep going. Next up, we have our diamond grape. Not something I've ever heard of in my life, but uh, it's got another big yeast blob floating around in it. This one's probably too much sugar, probably hurt carbonation. Yeah, it's distinctly a lot less. But it is much cleaner. There's not that cloudiness of the last one. Distinctly a lot less yeasty smelling, too. And I'm thinking it's probably because it had almost triple the sugar of the others, likely to have impeded the yeast growth quite a bit. Oh my god, it's just much too sweet. It does have a nice grape aroma. Yeah, it's still very rich, it's very flavorful. I think it tastes dead on to what it was. I just would want this a little bit more sour. But without that yeasty funk that the others had, this is probably the most drinkable. You know, if you're looking for a dessert kombucha. Let's keep going. Next up is our apple cider, which has nothing growing inside. Still pretty good carbonation. Smells a little yeasty, but mostly pretty strongly of apple. Tastes very strongly of apple. Again, pretty good sweet and sour balance. I feel like it's more balanced than the original bottle was. The original bottle was pretty dry. It was only about 6% sugar, so it was a lot more sour than it was sweet. This, I feel like, is a pretty even balance, and it still tastes and smells a lot like apple. This is really good. I think of all the things we're brewing today, this is probably what I would want to make again. I would probably want to ferment some apple cider myself, make a bottle of kombucha with that. Yeah, very pleasant. I wouldn't want to change anything about this. This one's worth making. Next up, we've got our oatmeal stout. Very clear, good carbonation, perhaps overcarbonated. Smells distinctly like a beer. Tastes distinctly like a beer. It's got a very Thick, rich mouthfeel. There's some bitterness. There's some sweetness. Sourness is kind of in the background. Well carbonated. Delicious beer taste. I think I might want an extra gram of sugar in here just because this beer was one of our driest. It was also about 6% sugar. For the most part, it's a pretty solid recipe if you're going to brew a beer into kombucha. Yeah, if I ever wanted a beer but didn't want to be drinking a beer, I think it was the way to go. Next up, we've got our Dirty Bastard, and this was fairly high in sugar. Let's see if it comes through. 
quite a bit of fizz on top there. A little bit yeastier than the others, but there's a distinct beer smell coming through. Don't know what to say about this one. It's kind of confusing me. It's got that beer taste. It starts kind of sweet. There's a little bit of sourness. But there's not really any bitterness. Something that you would kind of need to indicate that you're drinking a beer. And as you breathe out, it distinctly tastes like beer. It's just missing that bitterness. It kind of just makes everything overall too sweet. It's very flavorful. It's very rich. It's very carbonated. Uh, it's a really good kombucha but it's kind of a confusing beer kombucha. It's almost closer to how the wine's tasted. It's missing that one note that would make it distinctly a beer. All of these were really good. There was a little bit too much yeasty funk on those first two wines, but uh, even they were very drinkable. I'm not quite sure why that would have only affected those two, but uh, I don't know, everything else was really great. All of it was pleasant to drink. All of it tasted very distinctly like it should have tasted. Our Chardonnay tasted like Chardonnay. Our apple cider tasted like apple cider. Our Dirty Bastard tasted like Dirty Bastard. Even though our flavoring only took up about a seventh of the bottle, it still tasted very distinctly like that original product. And at least for me, that was my goal here. I don't just want fermented grape juice. I want a Cabernet kombucha. And I just can't imagine a better way to get there. So as far as I'm concerned, this is the way to go. We make both of them perfectly, and then we flavor one with the other. I think now I can sleep easy at night. So uh, thank you for watching. This is Reckless Booch.